Hey, hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world. I hope you're having a fantastic day and a fantastic week. Um, I'm Dr. Dan Nightingale, your clinical dementia specialist, and I'm joined with my wife and overall handler and manager of the practice, Lynn. Morning, Lynn. Hello. Today, I wanted to do a video on something that I produced in 2010, so like 14 years ago, but it is still appropriate today. And it's called My Dreams of Being. And My Dreams of Being was developed as a training program back in the UK in 2010 in partnership with a company called Vitalize with Zoe and Tony Duke, who, who, who were good friends of mine. What I wanted to do was, was educate care home staff and others that support people living with dementia in what it's like from the perspective of the individual that is living with dementia. It's what we call a phenomenological experience, okay? So what I did is split it into chapters and I'm gonna read chapter one today. And then next week I'll read chapter two and we'll read a chapter each week until it's completed, okay? So it's story time. Are we ready? I sat on my chair in the room. I'm an 87 year old man reaching the end of my life. I closed my eyes and I began to dream. They would call it reminiscing. Yes, they would say I'm back in cuckoo land once again. But what do they know? I'm actually 12 years old and I'm in the field with my very first horse. I was so excited. Sonny was his name. And very often it was just me and him. Well, my dad was too busy working and my mum had her hands full, just trying to look after everyone and live her own life as well. This meant that I got lots of things as a child, material things, but not a lot in the way of love, not a lot in the way of love that we consider love today. Motherly, motherly love and affection didn't really exist in my world. Everybody was too busy, no fault of theirs. And as for that so-called father of mine, that kind of relationship, father, son, it didn't exist. There just wasn't anything really there between us. They say that sometimes family we're not genetic and maybe that's how it was with us sorry <clears throat> but being with my horse was different he offered this kind of unconditional love this bond this relationship that we had that was that was different that was special there was no kind of demand on me there was no expectations <laughs> and even when I was riding, there was no expectations. And we had good times together. I remember the first time I climbed on his bike. <laughs> well, I say I climbed, but it was more like a scramble. And uh, I got up there and I was clinging on for dear life. But mind you, that didn't work because I immediately fell off the other side. It made me chuckle, although it did hurt a little bit. But you know, when you're a kid, when you're only 12, you soon, you soon heal. It, it soon passes, doesn't it? Then there was the time I was riding through the park. And this was a little bit more serious because he saw a fallen tree and he decided I'm going to jump that, that 
trunk of that tree. I'm going to jump it. Didn't tell me he was going to jump it. He just decided, I'm going to jump that tree. I tried to stop him. It wasn't possible. 12 year old kid, green in the ways of equestrian activities. Not possible. But I thought there's nothing to worry about. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Then he picked up his paces and he began to trot faster, faster. Started off with a bit of a seated trot and then it turned into a rising trot and he got faster and faster. Then he broke into a canter and he broke out in, and I broke out into a sweat. I've never cantered on a horse before, never even been on a horse before. What is he doing? And I'm shouting, stop! No good, no good. He was having none of it. He leaped into the air, cleared the tree. So he did well there. And he landed softly on the other side. But I was no longer attached to said horse. No, I'm flat on my back. <laughs> About three feet away from where he was. <laughs> and as I think about it now, I remember him just looking down at me and kind of smiling and laughing. Well, he was a Welsh cob. Says it all now. Now I know about horses. So that was one of the fun times that they will never know about. They never think I was once a young boy, full of energy, full of life, full of mischief. Danny, Danny, wake up, wake up. It's time for a cup of tea. I was shaken awake by one of those um, so-called carers. And you need to take this, um, this pill with it. She pushed this thing in my mouth before I had a chance to even find my bearings or orientate myself. Danny. I hate that name. People can call me anything, but not Danny. I've never liked to be called Danny. And how many times do I have to show them? Just because I can't talk to them. Heavens knows I have demonstrated enough times. In other ways, if you know my, if you get my drift. Mind you, that's why I have to take the pill in the first place. You give somebody a bunch of keys, you put them in a uniform, and suddenly they become this kind of majestic custodian. Keys, keys, who needs keys? Why do we need keys? Just to show authority. Oh, hell, I need to go to the toilet now. It's those bloody pills. This stuff they call tea. Tea? Mm. Hospital tea. We all know what that's like, don't we? Well, we Brits anyway. And these silly chairs. If only I could walk, I'd be able to go there on my own. If only I could tell them what I want. They have this routine called toileting time. Toileting time. I ask you, what is that all about? Toileting time. We all have to go to the bathroom at the same time. 11 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 7.30 before they put us into bed. And, and that's because the guards come on duty at 8. They want us all in bed before they come on. You know, this lot think... I don't know what they think, but they do think I'm deaf for some reason. So they talk about all kinds of stuff, stuff that I find really, really amusing. Always had a sense of, uh, always had a sense of humour, always been a bit mischievous. But I can't laugh outwardly because of the stroke. I had this last year, this stroke, and it kind of left me unable to express myself on the outside 
but on the inside, oh my God, am I still the same as I was when I was a 12 year old boy? Just like a crazed teenager. And after all, they keep saying, I'm one of them Dementids. Dementids. Only the other day, when two of them were trying to give me a bath, I say trying, because I absolutely hate baths. Until I came here, I haven't had a bath for probably 40 years. And no, I didn't smell, because I don't mind having a shower. Showers are okay. Give me a shower anytime. They don't put me in the bath. No bathtub. See, when I was a kid, we didn't have a bathtub. We didn't have an indoor bathroom. We had an outdoor bathroom, an outdoor toilet. And um, all we had inside was this tin bath that we would take a bath every blue moon in front of the fire. So no baths for me. But these two buggers, well, they ended up like drowned rats. I ended up getting another one of those white pills and the bathroom was a right state. Hmm? I've always been good entertainment value. Anyway, there they are, going on about some nurse they know but don't like, who apparently fell off one of those bouncy castle things. Landed on some poor bloke who was standing around, minding his own business. Kicked a drink out of his hands and ended up face down on the ground. They said nobody was hurt. However, <laughs> as I think to myself, I know that nurse. And um, she's a big girl. She's a big girl. In fact, I heard the charge nurse ask if she was going to get in shape for the new year. And I thought to myself, shape? She's got a shape. She's round. They might think I've no idea what's going on in the world. But how wrong can they be? So what I want you to do over the next week after watching this video is just think about that experience. Think about what Dan was going through. Think about how he was dealing with the situation, the environment he was in, the condition he was living with. And, um, and just think about language and communication and how you engage and interact with people, how you recognise them, how you acknowledge them and how you move away from making them feel invisible okay so think about that and then next week we will we will um do chapter two so thank you very much for listening to this video uh lynn is there anything you need to ask me about anything where can they get more information about my dreams of being uh, my dreams of being you have to contact me um, if anybody's interested in a training program or learning more about it just let me know send me an email Dr. Dan at drdanielnightingale.com or ask me through YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. And remember, guys, you can follow me on Facebook. OK, share this, share my Instagram profile, share my Facebook program profile with everyone. And uh, the more people we educate, the better. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next week.